Ang guy before I start, I'm going to be like this best way to find sister Asha, who will lose her annoyingness. We will draw the cross of her right to his speech and guided us by his conscious nature despite having really, really busy schedules. So, um, and I'd also like to thank sister Asha for the brilliant speech where she really did bring up some important values that we should try to have in our life, like selflessness, compassion, kindness, and um, try to have more people who are born in situations that they did not themselves choose, for example, poor people, etc. So, um, what for you guys, this speech is really short, given that we have very little time to prepare it, so, there it goes. As we all know, we gather here today to celebrate the wonderful legacy left behind by a valiant lady of virtue, Sister Euphrasy Martin. Born in France, in um, the uh, 4th of January 1829, Sister Euphrasy devoted her life to helping the poor and sick. Not only that, she has inspired women for ages to come, and the Sisters of our Indian have tried to pass on her legacy of kindness to our people. I want all of you here to think in what it really means to be here today, the gravity of today's location. The reason all of us are able to stand here, or sit for some of you, in the presence of this institution, which has developed so brilliantly over these decades, is because one woman, born more than a thousand miles away, who has no similarity to the people of our race and nation, decided to give people who are disadvantaged disadvantage the gift of education. It is easy to give up on things and walk away. It is easy to become satisfied with what we do on a daily basis. It would have been easy, similarly from other Euphrates, to have stayed in our country of France and worked as a missionary, serving our people, serving our family, people who look like her and talk like her. But she decided to traverse the seas and overcome all obstacles in her path, just because she was firm in her belief that everyone deserved proper education. Moreover, we as a nation were still under the British um, rule back then, which means that she was courageous enough against the people who shared the same background as her, thought was her love for all humanity and faith in equality of all. Just imagine the dire state of affairs that I said. As subject of a country under colonial rule, it is unlikely that our people would have been given the same quantity and quality of facilities that British people would have gotten elsewhere. Even if in our Gen Z for real no gap society, there are still so many places where people like women and other disadvantaged communities are unable to um, um, access things like proper education, proper schooling, etc. that Mother Euphrasy thought that they deserve. Think of the amount of societal pressure women have to face to not go to school, but do what they have been forced to do for generations, stay at home and get married off. What a daunting task it must have been to be able to get so many women into education at a time such as that as a woman herself. To this day, Euphrasy Barrier and her followers are continuing their mission of providing quality education to the different. In fact, throughout the world, great young women are still joining the Indian congregation in mass numbers. Not only on a global scale, even in Greenhound itself, a fresh batch of sisters run frequently, proving that Sister Euphrasy remains and will remain an idol to all women who have a charitable conscience and a determined heart. Now I'd like to give the mic over to Onushi, who will go into the details as to how Euphrasy Barbier actually did all the things that she accomplished in her life. Thank you. Thank you, Grosso. Now, as for Onushi, I would like to go over the journey details that Sister Euphrasy had over her years as a sister serving humanity and serving God. One time, Sister Abu Euphrasy Barbier, upon hearing of an opportunity to teach at a foreign country, set sail with her companion sister Mary Wilfred. However, before they could reach the coast, it had been occupied by other sisters. This was said to be a setback by God. Nevertheless, our young sister was not discouraged to say the least. Even if it dampened the spirits of those around her, the young and determined sister Ifredi Bambia would be the founder of a new missionary congregation. She used her setback as her own strength. She discovered that there were also other French women who were keen to join the marriage mission in the Pacific. So she began the formation program for this women. She was a leader and a pioneer as well as a mother figure for all of the sisters who joined the Arabian Bank. Sister Euphrasy was filled with hope that her vision of a congregation founded for missionary women would be dedicated to community life and working with women and children and those who are marginalized in our society. And it was becoming a possibility. On December 25, 1861, in Lyon, France, her became a reality. Euphrasy and her companion, Sister Mary Wilfred, began their domination. 
They both made particular vows on June of the the feast of the Sacred Heart in 1863. Mr. Ibrahim Zambia took the name Mother Mary of the Heart of Jesus, or as in French, we call it Mary the Girl to Jesus, and together with Sister Mary Wilfred, she took the name of the Sisters of Our Lady of the Mission. What a fitting name is it not, as they were always serving humanity and making sure that everyone would deserve a shot at life were given again. The long wait was over for the people in far away countries such as under the British rule who were not allowed to get education and for women who were forced to stay at home and home stay. And a new journey and a new life had begun in their lives. By 1864, Sister Euphrasy was preparing for her first young sister, new progress missionary, to board a ship from London to Australia, which was halfway across the world. That was the bravery of these women. And they would even fully settle in New Zealand and so many other countries around the world. The sisters, at first, began to run a girls' school, but soon they opted for girls and boys' school and opted orphanages around the world. Sisters continued to go out on missionaries to New Zealand and Pacific Islands. However, due to ill health, Euphrasy herself had not made the journey for many years. When she finally did, such was the joy of her people that they were very happy to have their leader among them, even if for a short time. Over the uh, four years that she journeyed, she experienced great joy in visiting sisters in New Zealand and Pacific Islands, as well as helping people who were also beneath the social center. In 1880, Sister Euphrasy established a new convent in Surrey, England with seven eleven sisters starting a large boarding school. By 1882, she was also planning to send sisters to India at the behest of the Bishop of Chicago. And this led to the foundation of the RMTM sisters, who in 1972 founded the school, the campus, that is so integral to our lives today, it is such a second family to us. In fact, so we can say that we have sister you crazy to thank for our large part of our life. To uh, in conclusion, one woman from a continent thousands of miles away, one woman whose language is even similar to ours, touched the lives of hundreds of thousands in our nation and inspired them to dedicate their life towards something meaningful, towards uniting humanity. Even after more than 140 years, the Missionary Society of Bangladesh and globally looks up to her particularly. So many missionary women chose this life of serving people who cannot help themselves. People who have been failed by others who are supposed to look after them and people who are marginalized by the society. For the sisters, they are no different. A whole culture of charity work profitlessly helping those in need was created here by one person. Thousands of people have been able to live better lives due to all the forms of support they got from an institution that Sister Adam and Sister Zambia created. So let us feel this day with a sense of responsibility and compassion towards people around us. Let us fill this day with gratitude and kindness towards the one whose life has been nothing but a guiding light for everyone in being kind and loving and selfless and free, both in life and in death. Thank you everyone.